Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello, Previet, and all that sort of stuff. This is a new series that I'm going to do. It's actually a bit of both. It's about how to play certain classes of tanks, but more importantly, what role those tanks have on the battlefield. Because one of the biggest things that I see, one of the biggest mistakes I see with newer players nowadays is they don't actually know what role their tank should be playing. In fairness, Blitz is a pretty straightforward game. You jump into a tank, regardless of the class, that tank has a specific parameter or role to play. You play that role, do your best, and try to win. It's that straightforward. Yet I see players jumping into tanks, whatever tanks they may be, and playing it completely out of the role that the tank is designed for. But what do I mean by tank classifications. Wow, in Blitz we have four in real terms. We have, in first one, we have the TDs. There's a TD right there. We have the heavies. We then have the mediums. And finally, we have the lights. Now, admittedly, in each and every class, there are subclasses, and we will deal with that at a later date. But at the moment, we are going to be looking at one particular class and we're going to go in depth and that class is going to be this tank well not this particular tank but this class of tank that's right the light tanks now the light tanks themselves are further broken into subcategories funnily enough and on the screen at the moment we have the t100 lt that is a general purpose light tank but aside from the general purpose light tank, we also have auto loading tanks like the Batchat that we have there. And then last but by no means least, we have the big derp tanks of which the Sheridan is probably one of the only ones, the Sheridan and the T92 and the T49. So whilst we have a class of tank, which is the light tank, we then have them subdivided even further. General tank, then we have the auto loading tank and then finally the derp tank and we are going to go through each and every one of these and show you what role they should be doing and basically how to play them so that's what we're focusing on we're focusing purely on light tanks we're going to be looking at how to play them we're going to jump into three replays one in a traditional light tank one in an auto loading light tank and one in the derp so without any further ado let's jump in to the traditional light tank and let's see what we're talking about. So we've jumped into the Vickers, the tier 10 British light tank. It's a traditional light tank. It doesn't have an auto loading gun. It doesn't have a big derpy gun. It's traditional. Now, the thing about light tanks is the following. You have to look at what their actual attributes are and that gives you an indication of what they're meant to be doing. So most light tanks will have fantastic mobility number one. They will have a great camo profile, number two, and they'll have really good view range, number three. So those are its pros. That's generally what the pros are for any light tank. What are the downsides? Well, they have pretty bad armor, and nine times out of ten, unless you're in a derp gun, they're going to be doing pretty low alpha damage, but they'll be doing it quickly. So, with that in mind, you should be sat there thinking, well, in my light tank, I should be getting to a position to spot and then try to keep the enemy spotted and effectively farm them, trying to stay out of arm's way and, if necessary, relocate, relocate, relocate. And that's exactly what we are doing here in the Vickers. We have jumped up to the middle area of the map. We have spotted a lot of the players on the enemy team and we are going to basically sit here try and keep them spotted with its very long view range and smack them we're not going to front line this tank not yet i mean there will come a time when you do need to put the tank on the front line but for the first instance you are going to be looking at spotting keeping them spotted and slowly slowly farm damage that is the key to playing a light tank Okay, now I see so many players running around the battlefield straight in and then brawling with the heavies or the TDs. You are not realistically going to win those battles. Okay, nine times out of ten you may get a Muppet on the other team and you may get lucky. But in all fairness, you will lose most of your brawls against mediums, heavies and TDs. 
you can circle to death. Some of them, don't get me wrong. Um, but I'm saying you leave that towards the end. Now we're going to push up, we're going to help out, we're going to try to do what we can. We've already taken a base, we've spotted a load of stuff, and now we are just going to get involved and we're doing effectively a mopping up exercise. This is what light tanks are designed to do. As I said, they're designed to use that mobility. They're designed to use the attributes of the tank, remembering that it is incredibly, incredibly weakly armoured. And the weakness of the armour tells you, don't front line it, don't stick it in harm's way. Point and shoot, get out of dodge, all that kind of stuff. And that's all we're doing here. Now we've taken just over 3k, oh that was a horrible bounce. We've taken over 3k, we farmed a lot from the rear, we've spotted a lot, we've assisted a lot, we've done quite a bit of assistance damage, we've taken three kills, purely on a mopping up exercise, and never once did we realistically stick the tank in harm's way. And that is the key to success in a light tank. It's always been the key to success. So don't go rolling in. If you feel that there's going to be a brawl and you're going to be outnumbered, run away. That's the idea. The idea is to use that mobility to the best that you can. You can see there, our assistance damage was, oh, was just shy of 2k. I mean, okay, we didn't set the world on fire. We got a first class, but we did just, uh, just shy of 3.5k. We took three um, kills. We assisted, we did some spots, we did what we're meant to do in a light. That was how you play and what role you should play in a traditional light tank. We're now going to jump into an auto-loading light tank. Now these are primarily found within the French line. All the AMXs and the bat chats effectively are auto-loading light tanks. And we're gonna see that it's a little bit of a different type of play style because you have to be mindful of your long reload. So let's jump in to one of these auto loading tanks and let's see what role we should be looking at and how realistically we should be playing the tank. Now we're jumping into the AMX 1357, a tier seven French light tank. Admittedly, it's a premium tank. And as you can see, it's got a lot of shells. <laughs> it's got a lot of shouts. But the parameters of this light tank, being an autoloader, isn't actually any different to that of the bat chat. Remember, mobility, spotting range, and its camo profile are its key attributes. Lack of armor is its biggest Achilles heel. And with the autoloading light tanks, long reload is also an Achilles heel. So again, you've got to remember try to put your tank somewhere where you're going to have some protection don't stick this in harm's way hence the reason why i'm looking around here doing my best to stay as safe as possible if i was able to put those shots into that bulldog and the other thing you need to remember with auto loaders is if you've got one more shell left in the clip then just press the ammunition again, the ammunition bar, and reload because you need your ammunition rather than have your long reload. Here comes the bat chap Baresk, he's an auto loader as well, but he's a medium, and we are able to take a lot of damage out of a lot of HP. And again, you can see I haven't really moved too far from my initial start point. Got a couple of sparks, put a lot of damage down, and now I'm running away. And this is the other thing about light tanks, especially the auto-loading light tanks. When you're on that long reload, run away, stay safe, allow the gun to reload. Put yourself in a position of safety and then do a bit more farming. Once you've done that, again, run away, allow the tank to reload, allow the gun to do its job and then move back into the action. And like we saw with the traditional light tank, we are effectively not frontlining it. We're not on the front line here. We're moving around the map. We're using our camo profile and our mobility to get us into a position. And we're using every inch of the map possible to try our best to stay unspotted. And that is the key. Remember, if you know your maps, you know that you can go to certain spots, you can move around. And if you can move around the map unspotted, 
you are automatically in a better position. Now we can put shots into this T32. It's a big tier eight. We're gonna track him. We're gonna try and empty the entire clip. We can't. We've now done 1400 damage and we're on our reload. So again, run away. Go to that place of safety. Hide your tank. We're by no means winning this game. Okay, we have the upper hand, but we're not winning. We therefore need to move in and again where we can get those shots, land those shots. The T34 is not interested in us, that more is downside than ours. Again, move away, allow the tank to reload. So we've done a lot of assistance damage here because we've done a lot of spots. We put a lot of damage in ourselves and we've moved around the map where necessary. But more importantly, we've kept all my hit points, done 2.5k damage. I haven't taken any kills and I've still got all my HP and we have not been sat at the back as a camper doing that sort of stuff. We've done what we need to do and that's the point. Do the job the tank is designed for and on a light tank that job is to spot and send the information back to your teammates. Without the information the TDs are useless. Without the information the heavies are useless. It's as simple as that. The light tanks are the eyes and ears of the battlefield. You need to use them effectively. You need to make sure that you are using the lights like the eyes of the team. Because that really is what they are. They are the eyesight for the team. And when you look at it over in a logical perspective, we did 2.9 there, we did 106 assisted, we, uh, we did okay. I mean, that's, that's, that's how you should be looking at playing these tanks. And we took two kills eventually. Now, the thing is, think about a team, okay, like your senses. So the light tank is the eyes of the team, okay. The mediums are effectively the legs of the team. These are the, these are the things that run around the battlefield as well. And, the, you know, they, they try to, they don't muscle their way. They try to use brain over brawns. Your heavies are your brawn. They're there. They're designed to punch the hole. They're designed to try and absorb shots and to put down that sort of stuff. And your TDs, well, they're designed to be your support. They're designed so when you spot these things up, they can put big, massive damage in, admittedly over a long time, but they're designed to stay relatively safe and give much needed support. So we've looked at the standard, we've looked at the autoloader. Now let's have a look at the derp. Well, there's no surprises. There's only realistically a couple of derpy ones in the light classification. Starting at the T-49, then goes to the T-92 and ends up with this tank, the Sheridan. It's a derp tank, but it's still a light tank. Now, what do we mean by derp? Well, we mean it's got a lot of damage coming out of the end of that barrel, but it does so over a lengthy period of time. It still has the same strengths and weaknesses to an extent of all the other lights. It has mobility, it has a camo profile, and it has spotting range. What this one doesn't have, however, is the ability to put down a lot of fire quickly. It has the ability to put down big damage per shot, but those shots take a long time. It also has the added Achilles heel of having really bad armor, but these have trolley armor because of their spaced armor along the fronts and the side, but don't let that mislead you. Whilst these tanks will bounce uh, occasionally and absorb HE, they are still very, very lightly armoured. Stick these on the front line, you are going to get smacked. So let's jump into a Sheridan and let's see how we should be playing that tank and the role that it should play on the battlefield. Okay, so we've jumped into the Sheridan, the derpy tier 10 American light tank. Whilst it may have a derp gun, the parameters now to play this tank still remain pretty much like the others. It still has a fantastic camo profile. It still has fantastic mobility and it still has pretty decent view range. It still has those vulnerabilities. Those vulnerabilities being a lack of armor 
to be honest with you. But this one also has the added vulnerability of having an excessively long reload because it's a derp gun. So you need to take that into account and you need to work out what your overall role is. Your role, as I said, is the eyes of the team. So go out there, spot them quickly and get away. With a derpy gun, it's a little bit like playing the autoloader because you've got that long reload. So make sure you've got somewhere that you can hide and be relatively safe until you've loaded that gun. And that's exactly what we are going to do here in the Sheridan. It is going to be a sort of like a game of hide and seek. We are going to use our mobility and our spotting range along with our camo profile to be able to get into positions like this and put massive damage down onto these tanks on the enemy without being spotted. Then once we fired, we're gonna stick ourselves in a place of safety, wait for that reload, and then pop out again and stick another shot down there. All the time, we are sending the information back to our team, telling them, look, there's these tanks, there's those tanks, there's this tank in this position, and that is the key. Now this poor E100, he's going to get a big roll into his backside because he doesn't know that we're here in the Sheridan. And again, we back away, wait for the reload. We are pretty safe in the knowledge that we're not spotted. Wait for the reticle to come down and we stick a blind shot into the 183. Down he goes, he's out of the game. We've still been unspotted. We haven't lost any of our hit points. We've done 1.6k in damage. Admittedly, that's not a lot. Now we can move forward because we're relatively safe and able to move forward and we can farm to our hearts are content. Backing away every time we take that shot to get that reload, make sure we're unspotted because your camo profile will change as soon as you fire. Thankfully, their light tank didn't do his role. He brawled. He stuck himself on the front line and he brawled. He went out pretty quickly. We, on the other hand, we've done the job that we're designed to do. We are there to make the spots. We are there to farm the damage. Now we're finally spotted. But now there's only three tanks left. We can now move up and we can give them a real hard time. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're now at uh, 3.9k damage. We've actually done 4k. But uh, unfortunately, it was a pretty... It was... Uh, you didn't see the blind shot on the 183 and it's not registered pretty straightforward stuff and this is how you should be looking to play the roles of the tanks and the various classes within that classification it's no different the only difference is is the fact that you've now got a very long reload and that does make a difference in how you play the Sheridan compared to others. We end up doing, I think, just shy of 5k there, or just over 4.5k. We get a fair few kills. We capped a base. We did over a thousand, look, 1,500 almost in assistance damage. That's all the spotting. You can see we get the spotter's medal. And that is how you should be looking to play these type of light tanks. And that's definitely how you should be approaching the role that a light tank should play. That's been my guide on know your role on the battlefield with a light tank. It's been my guide on how to play light tanks, what to look for, what attributes they have, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and realistically, what the tank is meant to do as part of the team. Now, I'm not saying I'm a great light tanks player because I'm not. I'm not saying that this video is ideal. It's not. It is the basics, and it's designed just to give you a few pointers to try and help out. By all means, comment and everything below because that's the idea of the comments. But that's basically what you should be looking to do, your role on the battlefield in a light and how to play the three subdivisions of the light tanks. I've been Fujit, that has been the light tanks, the standard light tank, the autoloading light tank, and the derpy light tank. As I said, I'll be interested to see your comments and everything below. And until the next time, guys, remember, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.